Kristen, first this morning, neighbors living near an abandoned home where a body was recently found are hoping the city will take action today. They say they've complained about two abandoned properties for years. For those living near Coors and Blue Water, boards on the windows and signs on two abandoned homes to keep out aren't enough. Police are investigating after someone spotted a man's body lying in the backyard of one of those homes over the weekend. Neighbors say they've called the city about criminal activity there for years. We spotted beer bottles, clothes and blankets. I'm hoping that now that the worst has happened, that something will get done. Essentially, our involvement is to ensure that the, that the structure remains uh, vacant and, and secure. According to city records, private owners are listed for both homes. For now, the city says it's best to keep calling 311 or police if you see something illegal. And this morning, one of the youngest teens charged in the murder of an Albuquerque bartender is out of jail and heading to a treatment center. Yesterday, a judge decided to allow 14-year-old Enrique Palomino to transfer to Sequoia Adolescent Treatment Center, the psychiatric hospital that treats violent children. Police say Palomino was among a group of kids who shot and killed Stephen Garrick in his driveway this summer. The victim's family is not happy about it. I don't think people like that should get treatment. Uh, they've already demonstrated that they're nothing but thieves and murderers, and they should just rot in jail. And once Palomino finishes his treatment, the judge says he will head back to jail. This morning, the Albuquerque Public School District is no longer investigating a reported student abduction. On Monday, an El Dorado High School student said a man forced her into his car, took off, and let her go in a nearby neighborhood. The school sent an email to parents about the incident, but after an investigation, APS police determined that there was not a kidnapping. So this morning, an Albuquerque woman will drive by the spot where her daughter died. The descanso she put up will not be there. She says she's devastated and is pointing the finger at the Homeowners Association. 41-year-old Deidre Frederick's body was found near 4th Street back in June, a victim of a hit and run. Her mother placed a memorial in that area, but when the descanso went missing from La Chamisal Norte HOA property, she asked what happened and learned it had been tossed. Well, I did go down and I talked to one of the managers and she told me that she got permission to remove it. She didn't give me a reason why. It was just disbelief that somebody would just take it upon themselves to remove this. So the law protects roadside memorials, but only if they're on public property. KRQE contacted the neighborhood's HOA president, who told us she did not know what happened to the Descanso, then referred us to the HOA's secretary. Deidre's mother says the situation was handled horribly. Developing this morning, we are waiting to learn if a man named a person of interest in the theft of radioactive tools from Los Alamos National Lab will face charges. According to a search warrant, a witness saw a man throwing the tools out of the trunk of his car into bushes on lab grounds. Los Alamos police tracked down Richard Atencio, a contractor at the lab. A hazmat sweep, they say, found high radiation levels throughout his car. But when the FBI searched Atencio's home, they say they didn't find lab property or radioactive items. The search warrant also revealed in the last year there have been 76 reported cases of theft of land on property. 605 now and happening now. Federal officials are investigating what caused a small plane to crash into a mobile home park in Florida. Yeah, and just into our newsroom, we've learned that two people have been found dead at the crash site. One of the dead is that of a woman who was reported missing after the crash. Nearby surveillance video shows a plane fell on a home, then exploded, setting two homes on fire. Several others were injured. The Red Cross is on the ground right now to help displaced families. And developing now, corrections officials in California say they're scrapping plans to use prisoners with violent backgrounds to fight fires. Officials originally said they were trying to increase the shrinking pool of inmates to choose from. They're still considering letting inmates with seven years left on their sentences uh, perform help there. Right now, only inmates with five years or less left are eligible for that program. Onto this, a gun shop in Wisconsin is preparing to pay a big settlement this morning after its owners were sued by two police officers. Yeah, a jury actually ordered the shop to pay nearly $6 million to two Milwaukee police officers who were seriously wounded by a gun that was purchased at that store. According to the lawsuit, the store's owners should have spotted the warning signs that the weapon was being sold to a man who was illegally buying it for someone else. Officer Brian Norberg and now retired officer Graham Kunish were shot by a man they stopped back in 2009 who was not allowed to buy a gun. 
We turn on to news happening right now. Funeral arrangements are being made for an Air Force major from Rio Rancho, one of the people killed in a chopper crash. 45-year-old Phyllis Pelkey and four others died in the accident near Kabul, Afghanistan on Sunday. She was deployed to Afghanistan in support of Operation Freedom Sen Sentinel at the time of the crash. The cause of the crash is still under investigation this morning. 28 New Mexico veterans without families to claim their remains are now at the Santa Fe National Cemetery after receiving a proper burial. The 27 men and one woman who served their country were saluted and honored yesterday during a special ceremony. Some of the veterans who were honored had either outlived their family or ended up homeless. That's where the Veterans Affairs Forgotten Heroes program comes in. They make sure no veteran is left behind. And they deserve to be laid to rest with a funeral befitting a hero. They have been left behind by others and we're not willing to do that. We're willing to step up to the plate and make sure that they get taken care of the way they should have. The Patriot Guard Riders of New Mexico also took part in the ceremony. Each one carried the cremated remains of a veteran. A new report shows more adults may be waking up this morning and checking social media. Today, older individuals are creating their own digital footprint. Social media usage among adults is up to 65% in 2015 compared to just 7% a decade ago. And happening today, AT&T and Oasis Albuquerque are teaming up to help seniors master their tech devices. Seniors will be able to get free quotes, get smart uh, lessons on how to use their smartphones or tablets today. You're urged to show up at Oasis Albuquerque on Manal starting at 9 a.m. and the event runs until noon. Good for them. Those mm -hmm. phones can be tricky. This morning, arson investigators in California are trying to figure out why a man walked into a Walmart then started setting things on fire. This is witness cell phone video from inside the store. Police say they caught the 40 year old man on surveillance video coming into that store. He allegedly had a cart with him with a container inside that was leaking fluid as he pushed it around. Eventually, the man stops near the Halloween costumes, then sets them ablaze. The store had to be shut down. He was then taken to the hospital for a mental evaluation and will be booked on arson charges when he's released. Imagine that. Mm -mm. That had to be frightening for the morning. The woman accused of paralyzing and nearly killing a New Mexico deputy is out of jail after getting arrested again this week. Now that deputy is calling for tougher penalties so offenders like her stay behind bars. Now Bernalillo County Sheriff's Reserve Deputy Jeremy Romero walks using a robotic exoskeleton system. This is after a crash where he nearly died two years ago. Then as a Corrales police officer, he was chasing suspected car thief Casey Williams. The 24 year old has now been arrested at least five times for stealing cars. Williams was arrested Monday again for not showing up to court. That case is still pending. However, online court records show her charges have been dismissed over and over again. I fully understand that uh, law enforcement, the district attorney's office and judges are, are taxed to the limits and I directly put the pressure and put the direct blame on our New Mexico legislators. Now Deputy Romero wants tougher penalties for criminals and more funding to staff agencies charged with catching and convicting criminals. It's not clear how Williams has been able to get her cases dismissed. Happening in just days, a judge will decide if a case against a suspected child rapist will move forward. The court has heard no testimony from the state, no evidence whatsoever um, as to why Mr. Stammer was not brought on these charges. Neil Stammer was extradited back to Albuquerque in 2014 after 14 years on the run. He's accused of raping one boy and molesting another. He fled after posting bond, but the FBI caught up with Stammer in Nepal with a fake passport. His attorney argued that Stammer has waited 16 years to face a trial, violating his right to a speedy one, even though he was in Nepal most of that time. The judge says he plans to make a decision on what happens next by Friday. Turn out to news happening today. The child molestation trial for former APS Deputy Superintendent Jason Martinez is expected to continue. Martinez faces four charges of molesting two boys in Colorado. The incidents happened before APS hired him without doing a background check. He resigned in August. Yesterday, a prosecutor said the two victims came from dysfunctional families and Martinez found them as perfect targets. Time is 634 new this morning. We now know how much time two ex Dona Ana County workers will serve for running a check fraud operation. Maria 
Sinisieros pled guilty to theft of government property and aggravated identity theft yesterday. The accomplice, Armando Gutierrez Torres, also pled guilty. County clerk employees were caught using stolen, uh, those county clerk employees were caught using stolen identities to file tax returns and get refund checks. Other workers in the office were arrested for, notar no, for notarizing the false documents. The pair will both serve 24 months in prison as part of their plea agreements. Gutierrez Torres will be deported back to Mexico when his sentence is over. Today, police in Albuquerque will continue to try to find new clues about a man's disappearance and if he actually staged it. Last month, police arrested 22-year-old Eduardo Ramirez Llamas after he and his friends pulled a home invasion on a suspected drug dealer. Police say his wife reported him missing three weeks ago, saying he left to go to the gym and never came back. Police are not sure if he is just trying to escape prosecution or if he is really in danger. Developing now, people who live in one New Mexico town are working to gather signatures on a petition to dissolve their government after the arrest of two city councilors. According to the Las Cruces Sun News, 22-year-old Daniel De Los Santos in Sunland Park is accused of providing alcohol to two 19-year-olds, one of which is his girlfriend. He's now facing felony charges. Sunland Park Councilor Sergio Carrillo was arrested at City Hall for drug on drug possession charges. The group must now get 1,400 signatures from registered voters. According to the county clerk, if there are enough valid signatures, a special election would be held to decide the issue. The group has no deadline to gather the signatures. On to new details. The government says the number of physical force incidents involving border agents is actually down, but assaults are up. New numbers from Customs and Border Protection show the number was down 26% in the last fiscal year. However, assaults on authorities went up 5%. The agency is crediting new training and new case review protocols for the improvements. It'll likely be a big talker today, the first Democratic presidential debate of the campaign season. Yet yeah, reaction is already pouring in. Critics say Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, and Martin O'Malley scored the biggest points last night. News 13's Catherine Azone dug into this. She's here with more. Good morning, Catherine. Good morning, Crystal. Front runner Hillary Clinton went head to head against her biggest rival, Bernie Sanders, for much of the two hour event. Take a look. Being the first woman president would be quite a change from the. Presidents we've had. The American people are sick and tired of hearing about your damn emails. Was the most searched candidate during the debate, according to Google. He scored major points for steering the discussion away from controversy and back to the issues. Lower polling candidate Martin O'Malley took Sanders to task on gun control. He says the night proves the contest is more than just a two person race. None of the five candidates on stage mentioned Vice President Joe Biden, who's yet to announce whether he'll even run for a White House bid. Some analysts say the vice president is waiting to see how Clinton handles her testimony before the House Benghazi committee that's scheduled for later this month. Back to you. All right, thanks, Catherine. Always interesting. So other big political names offered their commentary on the debate via Twitter. Republican presidential frontrunner Donald Trump was not impressed by any of the contenders. Well, former President Bill Clinton tweeted Hillary proved she was the most qualified candidate. And developing now, a top Russian official is questioning the findings of a report into the downing of Malaysian Airlines Flight 17. A Dutch-led investigation concluded Tuesday that the plane was shot down by a Russian-made surface-to-air missile fired from eastern Ukraine. The Russian company that makes the missile believed responsible contends the plane was shot down by a missile launched by Ukrainian forces from the government-held territory. MH17 crashed in eastern Ukraine the region in that region last year, killing all 298 people on board. New this morning, ex-NBA star Lamar Odom is reportedly in critical condition after being found unconscious at a Nevada brothel. He reportedly arrived to what's called the Love Ranch on Saturday and was found unconscious the next day. According to E! Online, Odom's ex-wife Khloe Kardashian is completely inconsolable. Kardashian and Odom were married in September 2009. They separated in 2013 after he relapsed with his substance abuse issues and allegedly uh, cheated on Kardashian. Moving on to this now, new shocking video this morning shows a Houston radio DJ hopping on top of a car in an effort to stop a thief. Take a look at this. Jolanda Jones says she was running a quick errand inside when she noticed a man getting out of a car in the parking lot. She says he jumped out of his car and smashed her car window, taking off with her purse and laptop. As this is happening, she runs out right there, hops on the truck as it pulls away. The car turned and ran over her foot. 
Jones did not stop there, though. I jumped in my car and then I followed him and except for I drive a Kia Soul and it has no get up and go. So they got up and went. Your life is worth more than a purse or a computer. But all I can say is there was no thinking. I did not think I reacted. Obviously, she's thinking now. You can see she knows it wasn't the best choice, but she says she's grateful she has no broken bones. Oh, yeah. And no that's kidding. the thing is let them go. It's not worth it. Exactly. It is not worth Putting it. They'll eventually get caught.